dearies and lovelies, the focus of today's episode is about the things I love most in all the universe. Foreskins! <laughs> what? Did you expect I were going to say you lot? <laughs> this is all mighty answers. Hello, as lovelies and dearies. I am the Almighty, and here on Almighty Answers, I answer questions. <laughs> well, not your questions, but questions in a philosophical sense. For example, why the bloody hell did Jews kick off with whacking off a bit of their todgers? <laughs> oh dear, language. I do speak well, all of them, after all. Sometimes I let slip in some uh, questionable phrasing. <laughs> anyway, why did the Jews start circumcising themselves? You hear and watching the interpretation according to Bible and rabbinical scholarly musings. But if you want a socio-cultural view on why circumcision is so prevalent, then take a look at Speaker's Corner. Mm, he's good. What? What? Make it easy for you and put a link to the video. Who art thou to presumeth that thou canst give the Almighty an order? Hmm? <laughs> I'll give the orders. <laughs> right then, circumcisions. What's the origin and why do Jews keep doing it? <laughs> well, it all kicks off with this bloke named Abraham, whose name changed to Abraham. Name changes are commonplace in these texts because... Abraham were an old Jew, so his name were Avraham, and that's what I'll call him now, because you lot know me to be true to its word. <laughs> Maybe, sometimes, occasionally. Abraham were literally an old Jew. The man were 99 fucking years old. <laughs> that's old. He wanted to have a son, because he were under the belief that he would father a nation. But how many 99-year-olds do you know that are having children for the first time? <laughs> Remarkable. Although these were biblical times. Genesis, the first bloody book, no less, says blokes and birds will live until well old age. Uh, but that's a story for another day. Abraham really wanted a son. And I'll, I'll get to why shortly. His wife were a bird named Sarai. But her name changed to Sarah. We were also well old, by the way, in her own right, and that womb were well dry. <laughs> anyway, it were almost impossible for this old pair to have a baby. Now, why were they so intent on having a baby? That were to do with something I told Abraham back when he were a spry young pup of 75 years. <laughs> Just a veritable baby. I promised him and made a covenant with him that he would sire a line that would rule the land of Canaan with the suggestion that this line would have domain over a great kingdom. I told you I were a man of his word and eventually he would father a child. Uh, not a child, in fact, but multiple. Two is more than one. <laughs> well, multiple, yeah, it is two is more than one. The first one would be with his mistress and handmaid, Hagar, that would bear the name Ishmael. The son he had with his legitimate wife, Sarah, would be Isaac. However, you'll have to wait on the stories involving those two boys and the f***ed up shit involving Isaac. <laughs> well, it is f***ed up. A little bit of background on Abraham. This bloke were well hardcore, like full on mental as f Last video, I told you about how badass the angel Gavriel were, but Abraham were a different kind of hardcore, like proper. I, 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 like, I like those kind of followers, you know what I mean? I promised him the land of Canaan, and we officially had a covenant on it. Like, you know, we spat blood into his hands and shook or something. But, but I'm the Lord, and I don't have to concern myself with such trivialities. Anyway, I promised him, Abraham, a whole bunch of bollocks, but then snuck right at the very end with, wait for it, hey, that's right, circumcision, yay, <laughs> you must be wondering why I would want the flashy bellendy bit to the knob, huh? Uh, well, you see, I were the god of the Hebrews at this time, and it weren't until later that I would state that no Jew could have shellfish. 
pod. Uh, so I were trying to set a good example, yeah? I mean, in the foreskin, it looks a bit like calamari rings. And that's why I wanted... Um, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Hmm, is there something wrong with that? Dost thou take issue with my judgment? Hmm? Oh, get with the programme. That's what I wanted because, well... Yeah, foreskins. <laughs> Why not? And now Avraham had to do his part. He was looking down at his todger one day in his 99th year, and he said, Crikey, isn't she a beaut? Now I'm going to sneak up on this binker right here, and I'm going to nip it right off in a time before anaesthesia. <laughs> hey, that's how you got to do it back in these days. Just getting right on and whick. Right off with the fleshy foreskin, mate. I must remind you that Avraham were 99 bloody years old, <laughs> and he did as I told him. Of course he would, because I am the almighty. But still, that is one hardcore mother... <laughs> he went and offed his bellend skin as a symbol of his covenant, because I told him that this would be an eternal link between his line and me. From that point forward, then all... All Jewish males needed to cut off the foreskins to ensure that the right people were receiving the kingdom as a physical manifestation of their commitment. What? A written contract? Are you barking mad? <laughs> oh, you're crazy. These people couldn't read. <laughs> Do you propose I enter into a contract with people that are illiterate? <laughs> what kind of omnipotent deity do you take me to be, eh? How would that be fair? Oh, well. Ship sailed on that one. <laughs> I got foreskins. Avraham did it the old-fashioned way, and I mean, he did this to himself, but oh, no, he didn't stop there. <laughs> Crikey, would you look at that? It's one of me slaves, and look, can you see his dinkum dizzy doodle? <laughs> hey, well, we can't because it's wearing clothes, but she's... she... she? He's... It's a real beaut. I'm going to sneak up on him and cut the foreskin right off that wanger. That's exactly what Avram did too. Even though his slaves weren't Jewish per se, but belonging to a Jewish person, and therefore had to fall under Jewish lords. And, well, goodbye foreskin. It didn't matter if the person were born a slave or came into slavery, but off the skin went, and you can imagine how painful the process were. Even you women out there can picture it. Can you? All oh, right, women. 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 <laughs> women. Yeah, I tend to forget you a lot, unless it's to place blame on you, to be honest. The reason you ladies don't require circumcision is that you don't really inherit anything anyway. <laughs> At least in the Bible. And that's because you're already holier than men. Eh? At least that's what rabbis tend to claim, and, well, why the bloody hell not? I actually do not explicitly condone female circumcision for a fairly obvious reason. It's f***ing hard to do. Ain't nobody got time for that. Avraham were going around cutting off foreskins because it were part of his covenant, but he also set a major precedent after he circumcised himself. Then it were a requirement for all males to lose the foreskins, so it became a cultural and religious ceremony to signify his covenant. Circumcision is a serious <laughs> business, and them Jews who have knobs that are too fleshy must get the <laughs> out of Judaism. Seriously. It's a penalty of carrot, which means they are cut off from the rest of us community. It's in Genesis 16.14, in case you ever want to read it, you bloody masochist. Speaking of bloody sadomasochism, there's the story of Dina, who were a descendant of Abraham and a daughter of Jacob, the only one, as far as you lot know. Huh? She were knocking about, as one does back in those days, and some wanker named Shechem up and rapes her. Now, this were not bloody cricket. Dina's brothers were all eggy and angry, but their dad, Jacob, suggested an alliance with the rapist family, as Shechem were a prince. <laughs> and of course, this, this makes perfect sense in biblical times. Marvellous. A condition of this alliance were to circumcise all the blokes in the rapist family, to which they agreed. <laughs> <laughs> More foreskins! <laughs> yummy, 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 yummy calamari!
Dina's brothers didn't give a toss about any cheery alliance, so they slaughtered all those wankers on what is arguably the most painful day of circumcision, which is the third. <laughs> oh well, I got all those foreskins, yay! When the tribes of Israel split, one of these brothers' descendants became head of the tribe responsible for ritual slaughter. <laughs> See? It all worked out in the end, didn't it? <laughs> Speaking of ends, let's go back to removing the flesh at the bit of a knob end. The ritual of circumcision was such a special event that I even allow it to happen on the Sabbath or holy day. The Sabbath is us most favourite day of the week because it is emblematic of us resting and nothing fun really happens on that day. Uh, despite us resting. So go figure. <laughs> Omniscient logic strikes again. <laughs> now, normally, Jewish people abstain from letting any blood on the Sabbath, but a baby must have his circumcision on the eighth day after his birth, so I reckon it were fine to have the procedure happen, even if it were the Sabbath. It's much like speeding on an empty highway. Now, technically, one shouldn't do it, but... Nah, who's going to know? Why eight days? That's all it says to do in the Torah without any explanation. But there are discussions as to the reasons why. One reason is that it gives the baby boy enough time to experience a Sabbath and a foreskin. I told you it were a big deal, <laughs> even though there are exceptions of a baby's health and birth due to C-section. But that's more of a modern thing, isn't it? Some speculate that eight days is enough time to enjoy the ritual. Are you taking the piss? Enjoy it. Who are you? Me? <laughs> oh, you kill me, you do. <laughs> Another reason is that you lot know me before you're born and then at your birth I place my fingers on you, thus creating your philtrum. Huh? Yeah, that's the groove between your lip and your nose. Oh, isn't that adorable? <laughs> and then off with your foreskin! <laughs> As compensation for you having lost all the knowledge before your birth, you must acquit yourself and re-spiritualise yourselves via circumcision. Them's the rules. Cos I say so. Speaking of rules, and boy do I love rules, there are a few of them when it comes to Jewish circumcisions. It's obviously almost entirely medical, but one cannot have the full experience without the religious element, or else one misses out on the Brit Milah, or Bris in Yiddish. Brit means covenant. There's a seat left open for Elijah to sit there because he's a dodgy narc bloke that wants to make sure everyone's following rules to the letter because... Nah, I'll get to his story some other day. Anyway, the ritual's mostly prayers, but there's one currently controversial aspect of the ceremony called the Metziza, in which the person performing the Brit Mila sucks the blood. Now, back in Abraham's days, that could lead to some... Ooh, well, y y you can imagine, right? <sighs> Not good. Nowadays, though, the person doing the circumcision uses a pipette to get the blood, but in some of the more... Mm, orthodox types, that can lead to issues, such as when a baby died when the bloke doing the Metzisa had an infection. Oh well, win some, lose some. <clears throat> That's mostly clandestine, and it's a generally safe medical procedure with the father or mohel performing the ritual. <laughs> Finally, there are some blokes that look to convert into Judaism. You can guess what that means. Hey, if they weren't already circumcised, well then, more foreskins for me. Yay! And if they were, then a doctor or someone draws some blood. Boo! I want us foreskins. I've covered why the Jewish people go off slicing off a bit of their todger, but do Christians and Muslims? If so, then why? Huh? Christians got rid of the practice because they wanted to convert pagans. I mean, honestly, what better marketing than... Crikey, you want to join our religion, mate? We're going to nip off a bit of that beauty of a didgeridoodle you got there. Brilliant! So that's why Christians generally don't do it, apart from the ultra-orthodox ones. On the other hand, for Muslims, it's not mandatory, but a sign of purity. Suffice it to say that the Quran says Muhammad were born circumcised. Yeah. And that Islam believes one should follow his life as much as possible. 
I'll leave that there as it were. That's our time for this episode, and I reckon you learned a lot. Perhaps too much, maybe, about circumcisions, particularly when it comes to the Jewish people. Huh. Us fellow channel, Speaker's Corner, looks into the secular and sociological aspects of the practice, so be sure to check out that channel and all the other videos they have. Do it! Mm. Remember, as always, to subscribe, like and comment on this video. I'll see you next time. Tatty by me lovelies, tatty by now. <laughs> Subscribe, that is, my children. Now share, like, and leave a comment. I get lonely sometimes and I love me some questions. And hey, remember, soon you'll be able to follow me on other social media channels. <laughs> she will.